Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. It's time for my annual Camera and Lens Awards and you can see some in front of me. It has been an incredible year in 2023 and I'm so excited to give these awards out. Now these awards are completely subjective. If you're new here, it's just a bit of fun. I created a poll and close to 500 people voted in that on what they thought we should get these awards. I'll also be using my own perspective after using, believe it or not, 11 cameras and 17 lenses this year, which is just amazing. I'm extremely grateful. All right, so let's start with the best wildlife camera released in 2023. And you can see the list of nominations. There's quite a few there. Canon gave us the R8, which had the amazing R62 sensor. Panasonic actually entered the race for wildlife, giving us the G92 with eye tracking. I photographed this amazing bearded dragon with this camera. Pair it with this 100 to 400, and it's a great little combo. Sony have landed the A6700, which is an APS-C body with eye tracking, which works amazingly on the 200 to 600. So that's an excellent combo. I took a lot of good shots with that setup. And of course, Sony have just recently announced the A93 with that global shutter. However, there was only ever going to be one winner. And what was it? It was the Nikon Z8. It blew away the competition. The fact they gave us flagship specs and a mid-range body is incredible. 45 megapixel stack sensor, oh, it's just amazing. And I had so much fun using that camera. Now, even in my Canon bias poll, I'm predominantly a Canon shooter, they also said the Z8 was the best camera, so it must be a worthy winner. Unfortunately, I was a little bit sick when I got to test this camera, but I still loved using it and took some really cool shots. This black swan image is probably one of my favorite. I just love the interaction between the adult and the juvenile. Now, my good mate Jan also had the opportunity to use the Z8, and he got some absolutely cracking shots. The one that I really liked was just this Oz spray banking in the sky, capturing the flight shot. Just shows how good that auto focuses on the camera, a high frame rate, stack sensor, so no rolling shutter. Overall, just an incredible package and a worthy winner of the best wildlife camera released in 2023. All right, so the next award is the king of the castle or the best flagship camera. Now, nearly all the brands have amazing flagships, all except the Canon, which is still stuck on a DSLR. They haven't given us the R1 yet, but they do have the R3. So I'll say that's their flagship at the moment. Now, all of these cameras are fantastic and I'd be happy with any one of them. But for me and my style of shooting, it really comes down to three cameras. The Sony A1, the Canon R3, and of course the Nikon Z9. Those are three professional bodies with extremely good sensors, uh, high frame rates. They're just gonna do the job without any issue whatsoever. If we start with the Canon R3, I love the feel of this body. By far the best design in my opinion. The ergonomics are excellent. I love the button layouts. I'm familiar with it. It's just an absolute joy to use. And I did actually take quite a few shots with that camera that I'm very happy with. I really like this backlit shot of a pair of soft crested cockatoos. There's just something about the behavior here which I really like. And remember Dave, he has this camera. He took this shot of a satin bowbird. Fantastic detail, love that purple eye. Overall, just a cracking body. The next body, and it's actually the one that has led the way and set the standard, that's the Sony A1. Believe it or not, that was released almost three years ago. It has a 50 megapixel stack sensor. I think it's up to 30 frames per second. It's just an amazing camera. And when I used it, I was just blown away. I thought, wow, this is incredible. And I had it paired with the 200 to 600 and it was an excellent camera and body. I took lots of good shots, flight shots, you name it. We had a lot of fun. So one member who has this combo is Simon and he shared with me an absolutely stunning shot of a short eared owl. This flight shot is everything we want in an image. The eye contact is just next level. The pose is fantastic and the detail is just off the charts. That's what this camera is good for and it's definitely delivered in that image. And of course, the final camera is the Nikon Z9. This is a bit of a powerhouse. It's a beast of a camera. Thankfully, I got to use it this year a couple of times and apart from the weight, I absolutely loved it. It's got that 45 megapixel sensor, high frame rate, you very rarely ever hit the buffer. The autofocus is great once you can figure it out. And it's just a really solid performer. Match that with Nikon's lenses and you're onto an absolute winner. And the other positive thing is Nikon keep giving firmware updates for this camera, improving it time and time again. And for that reason, in my opinion, the Nikon Z9 is the king of the castle. It's the best flagship camera. Now in terms of images from this camera, there's quite a few. My favorite one was of this backlit beach stone coolie that I took. I just like the overall feel of this and the autofocus was excellent in tracking that subject. 
And judging by the poll, maybe my audience isn't that biased after all, because the Z9 won in the poll as well. So remember Gary sent in one of the best shots that was submitted. It was of a wood duck. He's timed this to perfection as the bird's launching, its wings are out. I was just surprised with the detail on this. And obviously the tracking and the high frame rate allowed this pose. So another member that utilized the Z9 was Simon. He was photographing otters and he got a very short opportunity as it's coming out of the water. He's obviously held down the shutter for a burst got this image already. So the next award's a bit of a funny one. It's actually the best DSLR that's still for sale new. Now I know mirrorless is the future and mirrorless is the now, but lots of people still enjoy DSLRs and I still like pulling out my 1DX from time to time. It's just different, the OVF, it's just got that nostalgic feel to me and I still love using DSLRs. The best DSLR has to go to Nikon. They obviously had the D500, which is great. That's not sold new anymore. But the camera that is, is the Nikon D850. The D850, in my opinion, is probably the best DSLR ever made. This camera introduced that 45 megapixel sensor, which at the time just blew away the competition. The detail out of it was excellent. The frame rate was good. The autofocus was excellent. Now, I don't have any photos myself from that camera, but I asked my good mate Hein to share a few, and he was kind enough to share some, and boy, are they great images. And it's this shot of a black bellied storm petrel. The timing in this is sensational. These birds are tiny. They flutter around on waves. The waves are moving, the boat's moving. So for Hind to nail that shot is just exceptional. Obviously the D850 assisted in that, and I absolutely love it. So the next shot is a bird I would love to see. I've not seen it. It's the colorful blue-faced parrot finch. What a name, and you can see by the colors why they've called it that. Just a wonderful shot. So I think what those photos demonstrate is what a good camera that D850 is, and it is a worthy winner of the best DSLR still for sale. The next award is for the best starter camera under 1500 US. So we're now at a point where there's lots of good mirrorless cameras for people who are just starting out that aren't gonna cost a fortune. I think for me, what's really important is a camera has to have good autofocus, Eye tracking is definitely a bonus, good FPS, and obviously access to some nice lenses. All of those options are really, really good. I enjoyed using the Sony a6700, and I thought that performed extremely well. However, I think that body for me personally is just a little bit too small. It doesn't quite fit my hands properly. And that sort of leaves for me, and it was a clear winner in the people's poll, is the Canon R7. For this camera here, I think in its price range, it delivers that 32.5 megapixel sensor, which is great pixel density. It makes those subjects nice and big. It's got up to 30 frames per second. It's got eye tracking. It feels good and you have access to Canon's RF lenses. So I think this is sort of one of the best beginner cameras you can get. Now I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this camera as you're all aware, but I think if we just judge it on its peers and not actually judge it to the R5, etc., it sort of stands on its own and is a bit of a leader. When I actually reflect on the images I've captured with this camera, I've taken a lot. Now, one of my favorite shots I've ever taken was actually on this camera. A backlit shot of these cormorants. I absolutely love this. And this camera performed extremely well in that circumstance. What's important though is that I share some member images because a lot of members have the R7 and a lot of them are very, very happy with it. So let's have a look at a few of those. The first image from Tomas is this beautiful plain parakeet. They could have had a better name for this, but I can see why. I just love the green. It's feeding. I love that interesting flower. The detail's great. A very nice image. The next shot is of this pygmy kingfisher. What a cool name by Emma. She said she was shooting into a dark bank, but the bird was in the light. That's why the background's black. And I quite like this effect. And the detail in the bird is great. We can focus on that kingfisher. Overall, thumbs up on that one. And the last image I want to share is by member Powell of a common red pole. The details just wonderful in this. So overall, an excellent camera for beginners and a worthy winner of that award. All right, so the next award goes to the best mid-range all-round camera. It's sort of the jack of all trades, the camera that can do it all, does video, it does stills, does wildlife, landscape. It's just the workhorse camera. As you can see, there's a lot of really good options. And when we look at the poll, there are three standouts was the R62, the R5, and the Nikon Z8. I don't think we can discount the Sony bodies though, the A74, the A7R5. Sony cameras work really well. Their autofocus is good, 
the sharpness is excellent and they have that really nice lens so we can't discount those I think people do because they don't quite have the FPS and the a7 IV doesn't quite have the megapixels of the R5 etc when we look at the R6 Mark II I think that is possibly an ex one of the best refined cameras for its price the autofocus is excellent the video is great I love that camera. However, it is only 24 megapixels and that leaves us a two-way battle between the R5 and the Z8. On paper, the Z8 is the better camera. It's got the 45 megapixel stack sensor. It's probably got a better buffer. It's probably got better IS. It's just probably a better spec camera. However, if you were to ask me which camera do I enjoy using best, I find it difficult to go past the R5 and that's mainly because I'm a Canon shooter. So of course I'm going to gravitate towards what I know, but the ergonomics of the Canon just make it easy for me to use. I love the button layout, I love the autofocus, and believe it or not, when I look at the images, I believe this sensor, this 45 megapixel sensor, has some of the best image quality I have ever seen. The noise performance is excellent and the images are just, I, I can't fault them. And for that reason, in my opinion, I think the R5 is the best mid-range all-around camera. And it's surprising because we're going to get an update next year, I can't wait. But if you were to pick up this second hand, you will not be disappointed. This is such a good camera. I've taken too many images to share. One that I took recently that pops up into my mind is this scene I shot when the fog was coming in. I had two ducks flying over the reeds. I just love the simplicity of it, to be honest. That image just resonates with me, and I just love having 45 megapixels. Now, when we look at my members' photos, this is obviously a very popular camera because I got lots of images submitted. The first image was this cracking flight shot of a peregrine falcon by Mark. I just love the pose to be honest and obviously the R5 has tracked that bird as it's flying through the cliffs and it's done a stellar job of landing that photo. So this image is possibly one of my favorite images that was submitted. It's by member John and it's of a curlew in flight. This shot is exceptional. I just love the pose, the eye contact, that wing obviously hitting the water, skimming along, the detail is excellent. Obviously the lenses track the subject. This is everything I want in a wildlife image, so well done John. Now the next shot made me smile. Mark submitted this photo of a whole heap of dusky wood swallows. I've never seen that many all together on one perch, and it's just fun, isn't it? You can look at this image and go, wow, I've never seen that before. So the next shot is by member Gary, and it's another flight shot which shows how good the autofocus is. This is of a black cockatoo, and I just like the cheeky pose here. The bird's flying, it's got an eye looking at us, and overall it's just a wonderful shot. And Gary said he's traditionally always shot DSLRs, but he upgraded to the R5, and he said he's getting bird and flight shots that he just didn't even dream of prior because of how good that autofocus is. All right, so it's time to move on to the lenses. What is the best new wildlife lens for 2023? And if I'm being perfectly honest, it's just overwhelming. There were so many good lenses released in 2023, we should probably call it the year of the lens. The first lens I want to talk about that impressed me was the Canon 100 to 300 2.8. It's a brand new design. They've gone away from the 300 prime and given us the zoom lens. As you would imagine, for that price, it's a great lens. I managed to capture this common bronze wing that I really like. And as a 100 to 300, it performed very well. However, once I put a two times on it, it didn't work quite as well as I wanted. And in all honesty, it's probably just a little bit too short for birding. It's fine for big mammals, but it's not ideal for birds, so it's not a lens that I would actually even consider myself. The next lens that needs a little bit of credit is the Panasonic 100-400 version 2. This lens is tiny, but when you put it on the Micro Four Thirds body and you have a field of view of 800 millimeters in this tiny package. So full credit to Panasonic for creating this. It's light, it's sharp, and it seems to work very well. So well done to Panasonic there. Obviously Nikon gave us the 180 to 600. However, when I think about the lenses that had the biggest impact on me this year and that I enjoyed using the most, it comes down to a two horse race to be honest. And that is the Nikon 600 PF and this Canon 200 to 800. Two incredible lenses. The first one I want to talk about is the 600 PF. It's a beast of a lens. It is probably one of the best lenses I have ever used. This lens is so sharp, it's ridiculous. It's as sharp as your big F4 primes. And the thing that makes it so special is Nikon with their PF technology, they're now giving us big prime level quality 
and much lighter, smaller packages. The 600 PF, I think, weighs 1.4 kilos. It weighs just a little bit more than this 100 to 500. It's just a joy to use. You whack it on the Z8, the Z9, and hopefully a APS-C in the future, and you've got a killer of a lens. So I didn't get that many images with the 600 PF, but I took this shot just to demonstrate the sharpness of the lens. I took this Sacred Kingfisher, and the bird's quite small in the frame. This was on the Z8. And when we zoom in, look how well it maintains its detail. The fact that we can crop heavily and still have a shot that looks this good is a credit to both that lens and the Z8. It's just amazing. Now my mate Jan also had the pleasure of using the 600PF and he shared with me this flight shot of a pied oyster catcher which just demonstrates how amazing it is to have that lens, that light, and that fast and that sharp just to do bird and flight. Honestly, it might be one of the best bird and flight lenses out there, and I love this image. So for those reasons, I think the 600PF is one of the best lenses released this year. But of course, we recently had the release of this Canon 200-600. I did my first impression video recently. I'm very impressed, to be honest. To have 200-800 to in one lens without any converters, and this size, it is big, but it's two kilos, so it's around the same weight as your 600mm zoom lenses. I think Canon are onto a winner here, to be honest. Uh, that sort of reach and this sort of price bracket is just fantastic, and it's just so versatile that I love it. And if I'm looking at the images I've taken so far, very happy. And I want to share with you an image that I took recently with my mate Jan of the absolutely stunning pink robin. This shot, I just love it. The detail is excellent. It was taken on the R7, believe it or not. So we can see that the R7 200-800 is a very capable combo that gives you lots and lots of reach and is one of the better birding combos out there for beginners, in my opinion. The ability to have that reach just can't be underestimated. And for that reason, I truly believe it's going to be a wonderful lens for a lot of people. So which lens wins? Which one is it? The 600PF or the 200-800? I honestly can't separate the two. They're both that good that they're going to be joint winners. I have to give the award to both of those lenses. That leads us on to the best beginner lens for under $1,000. And thankfully, there's quite a few to select from here. For me, personally, you probably want a minimum focal length of 300 millimeters. Of course, it depends if you're using full frame, APS-C, or micro four thirds, but 300 mil is kind of a minimum. In that range, there's lots of options. There's one lens I wish I had tested, and I haven't, and that's the Sony, what is it, the Sony, 70 to 350 apparently by all accounts that is a very good small lens and there's a number of others from sigma fuji olympus etc however there's probably two lenses that were dominant in the poll and two lenses that i've used which i believe are some of the best beginner lenses you can get what are they the first one is the canon rf 100 to 400 i did a review on this by far probably the best value lens that money can buy for beginners. I think you can pick this up uh, brand new on sale for about 500 US. So the beauty of this lens is that you can do spiders eating dragonflies and then you can zoom out and do backlit kangaroos and then obviously you can zoom in and do birds as well. It can sort of do it all. And a member who has this lens is Florin who sent this headshot of a mallet. I just like the overall composition and feel of this. The light's good, the eye contact's good. Overall a great shot. And the next shot by member Matt is of a wax wing, and I like the colors in this, and the detail again is excellent. So the next lens is probably one of the best selling wildlife lenses of all time, is the Sigma 150-600 Contemporary. That lens is extremely popular in DSLRs, and it's been used, adapted on many mirrorless bodies with great success. I've used that lens extensively, and I've taken some wonderful images with it, such as this brown falcon. The benefit of this lens is that it's extremely cheap. I think it's around $1,000 US for 600mm 6.3. It's sharp enough. It, it's quite heavy, but over Overall, it's just a really well-made lens that makes a lot of people happy and is still a good option. A number of my members have this lens, and the first one I want to share is from member Wojcik, who actually, it's not a bird, it's actually a dragonfly. And check it out, the detail is really, really good. Now, the light has definitely helped in this situation, but overall, it's very, very sharp. And the next shot, it's actually another wax wing by member Emric. It's a popular bird. It's in this berries. It obviously is attracted to this tree. There's a lot of color in this image, and the bird sits well in the habitat here. And the last shot is a flight shot of a black skimmer by member Ryan. He's managed to just freeze the action as that bird's flying over the water, so he's done extremely well there. All right, so where, who does the award? 
would go to the Canon or the Sigma. For me, I believe it goes to the Canon RF 100-400. This is a native RF lens, so you don't need any adapters, and it's going to last everybody years and years who buys it. It's just so small, it's so versatile, that I think nearly every Canon shooter should have this in their bag. It's that good. So the worthy winner is the RF 100-400. So the next award is for the best zoom lens under 3000 and boy is this a competitive award. We are lucky now to have so many good zoom lenses, it's kind of ridiculous. For a long time Sony was leading the way with their 200 to 600, but now we have the Nikon 180 to 600, we have the Canon 100 to 500, we have the Canon 200 to 800, we have the Panasonic 100 to 400, we have the Olympus 100 to 400, the Fuji 150 to 600, the Sigmas, the Tamrons, <laughs> the list is almost endless and that's great for us as consumers, but difficult for me to choose a winner. For me, I think there's one lens that sort of sits above all else in terms of its sharpness and usability. And for me, that is the Canon RF 100-500. I think one of the strengths of this lens, much like the 100-400, is its flexibility. This sunrise shot, believe it or not, there's a spoonbill in this image at the top of this tree. And whilst I was there, a wedge-tailed eagle's flying past, so I'll zoom out 500, nail that shot, and any sort of birds you can get as well. Yes, it's a bit short at 500, but in that focal range of 100-500, this is just excels, absolutely excels. You can use a 1.4 converter, you obviously lose that 100 to 300 range, but I think now we have the 200 to 800, you can use that for if you need the reach, but you'll always be reaching for this if you want a small lens that can sort of do it all. Now I could share lots of my own images, but what I'll do is share some of my members. So the next shot by member Dave, and it's of a brown pelican, a bird I'd like to see because it's obviously the cousin to our pelican we get down here, but he's managed to get another great flight shot with this lens. And the last shot I want to share is by member Julie Davis. She actually took a shot of some red browed finches, and it's quite a nice little scene here. We've got the three finches, and if you're not aware, that middle finch is actually holding some grass, and it does that in its ritual for pair bonding and trying to find a mate. It's obviously displaying that he's pretty good at catching or finding grass and uh, hopefully she was impressed by that. So a wonderful photo. So overall I think the 100 to 500 is a worthy winner of the best zoom lens under $3,000. So the next award is for when money is no object. If you had unlimited funds, which lens would you buy? Now if we pop over to B&H and we actually sort by most expensive, Canon actually leads the way with their massive 1200mm f8. That is 20,000 US dollars. Convert that to Australian and we're looking at $30,000 for a lens. You could buy a car for that. So these lenses are very expensive. So if I could choose one of these lenses, which one would it be? For me, I think the 600 millimeter lenses sort of have the best image quality. Put a 1.4 converter on, you've got 840 millimeter 5.6. Nikon have solved this by actually having a converter built into the lens. With the flick of a switch you can go from 600 to 840 and that just makes it so much easier to use than an external converter. So for me if money was no object I'd be buying the Nikon 600 f4 with a TC built in. I haven't actually used that lens but again my mate Jan has. He shared some images and the image that I want to share is this beautiful white bellied seagull flying in the sky. So you can even use this lens handheld and the detail again in this image is excellent. And another image by Jan is this pitta. The detail in this, the background separation, it's just a beautiful image of this absolutely beautiful bird. Alrighty, so that leads us to the very last award in today's video and that is brand of the year. Which brand has had the biggest impact on wildlife photography? Which brand has released the best cameras and lenses in 2023? And it's actually pretty competitive because all the brands have done their very best to release gear. Obviously Sony have come out with their A6700, their 300mm 2.8, the A9 Mark III, Canon have obviously had the R8 and a few other affordable bodies, the 200 to 800, the 100 to 300. Panasonic have entered the G92, the 100 to 400. The list goes on and on. However, there's one brand that probably leads all other brands in terms of wildlife, and that is Nikon. Nikon have absolutely blown out of the water. If we just reflect on today's awards, I think Nikon got at least five of them, which shows you how far they've come. If we were to think about the selection of cameras and lenses that Nikon currently offer for wildlife, it's mouthwatering. You've got the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z9 in terms of bodies. You've got the Zoom 180-600. You've got their 100-400. You've got their 400-4.5 Prime, their 600-800 
PF primes, the 400 and 600 uh, big primes with built-in converters. They've just got so many lenses and cameras now that it's just amazing. And, and for you Nikon shooters, you must be so happy. And to think of where Nikon have come, if you remember, they were the last ones to really adopt mirrorless. They lagged behind Sony, which were the leaders, and then Canon. But now, when we look at it, they're actually leading the race, in my opinion. They've definitely put the heat on Sony and Canon and others, and they're showing what's possible. I would love these PF-style lenses for Canon. I, and I really look forward to the R5 II having that stack sensor. The only thing Nikon are missing is, as I mentioned, they need some more affordable bodies with eye tracking, APS-C, etc. But otherwise, credit to Nikon, you are the winner of the best brand for 2023. Overall, it has been a wonderful year. I've taken loads of images. I've enjoyed your company. I've loved reading your comments. Let me know what your favorite lens and camera was in 2023. Put it down in the comments. I will read them. And what are you looking forward to in 2024? I know I'm looking forward to quite a few. The R1, the R5 Mark II, the Z6 III. There's just too much to look forward to. Now, to end with, I just want to thank, obviously, my beautiful members that support me. If you're not aware, for the price of less than a cup of coffee, you directly support the channel. And if you want the chance of having one of your images in a future video, that's how you do it. Become a member and you'll get that opportunity. So to end the video, I'm going to share a few more images with you from my members. But thank you so much for your support in 2023. I hope you have a happy holiday period and I look forward to seeing you all in 2024. Take care, happy birding, and see you later.